Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Restoring Virtual Machines with Veeam Backup. In this lesson, we'll go through three different ways of restoring virtual machines or part of virtual machines. The first one being restoring an entire virtual machine. Then I'll show you how to restore individual virtual machine files like a VMDK or a VMX file. And then finally, how to restore individual virtual machine files using Veeam Backup. What we won't cover is the Veeam File Level Restore Wizard because I've got a separate video on using that special restore tool. So with that, let's get started. All right, here I am over in the Veeam Backup Console, and what we want to do is to restore a virtual machine. Now if we go into the Backups folder here, you can see a list of the backups that have been run, organized by backup jobs. So here's the three different backup jobs that have been run. Over on the right here, you see the virtual machines that are related to those backup jobs. If we expand out these backup jobs, you can see the number of restore points that have been created with that backup job. So basically those are the different backups that have been run and this is how many times those virtual machines have been backed up. So we'll have that many restore points to choose from when we go to restore a virtual machine. So the first thing we need to do is to select a virtual machine that we want to restore. So let's say that we want to restore this Windows 2008 R2 server underneath backup job number one. We'll have three restore points to choose from and to make sure that this is a real world test, I'm going to go over and actually delete that virtual machine in the vSphere client. All right, so over here in the vSphere client, here's the Windows 2008 R2 virtual machine. I'm just going to right click on it and I'll go down to delete from disk. It says, are you sure you want to delete this virtual machine? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Notice down here we're deleting the virtual machine. And there we go, that virtual machine is gone. Now what we want to do is get it back. We want to get it back using one of our Veeam backups. So back here in the Veeam backup client, to restore a virtual machine, all you do is go up here to the restore wizard. You just click on that big button. Keep in mind you can also right click on an individual virtual machine and select to restore the entire virtual machine, virtual machine files, or guest files. But let's use the restore wizard up here by clicking the big button. So it comes up and it says, what would you like to do? We can choose really from these three options at the top, since we haven't done any replications yet. These last two sections are related to replications that we might have done, and we could use those replications to restore virtual machines or virtual machine files. So what we want to do is to restore from backup, and we want to restore the entire virtual machine, which would include registering it in the vSphere virtual infrastructure. Now other choices here are specific virtual machine files and individual guest files, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. So we'll select entire virtual machine and say next. Now we're asked which virtual machine we want to restore. Well, if we look through our backup jobs here, in the first backup job, here's the Windows 2008 R2-1 virtual machine. You can see the last backup date and time, and we have three restore points. I'll say next. And now we're asked to choose what restore point we want to use. The latest restore point is this restore point here at the very top. That's why it shows it at the top. It's the latest backup, and it would actually provide us a synthetic full, which is a combination of the original full backup plus any changes that have happened since then. Let's go ahead and power on the virtual machine after it's restored and say next. Now we need to tell the restore wizard which ESX server we want the virtual machine to be restored on. If we expand this list, we can select whichever ESX server we want it back on. I know originally it was on ESX1, so I'll select that. I can click on host summary here, get a little bit of information about the host if we want. We can see the storage and free capacity. I'll say cancel there. Now we need to specify the virtual machine name. By default it just puts in the original name, but we could call it dash restored if we wanted to do something like that. Now we can also restore the virtual disk either in their original format, we could force it to be a thick disk, or we could force it to be a thin disk. Now I want to preserve as much space as possible, so I'm going to force it to be a thin disk, and then it asks where we want to put it. What data store do we want this virtual machine to be put back on? Let's put it on the iOmega storage area network because it has the most free space and then we'll select to put it over just in the generic resource pool. I'll say next here 
and then all we have to do is click finish and it starts verifying the backup and then restoring the virtual machine. Now it'll take some time to restore that virtual machine so what I'm going to do is to pause the video recording and I'll be right back. All right, we're back in the virtual machine restore has completed. You can see Windows 2008 R2 was restored to ESX server number one. The time elapsed was about 19 minutes and the restore rate was 87 megabytes per second. And we did tell it to power on that virtual machine when the restore was completed. So if we go over to our vSphere client and we look in the inventory here, we can see Windows 2008 R2-1 was restored. You can see it's powered on here. That's the status, powered on. It's stored on the iOmega SAN where we told it to be restored. And we can open up the console here. And we can log in and verify that the virtual machine does indeed work after we restored it. And there we go, the successful restoration of an entire virtual machine in about 20 minutes. Now let's move on to the second type of restore, and that was to restore individual virtual machine files like the VMDK or the VMX files. So if we close out this console, and let's open up the data store browser for the iOmega SAN, and that's where that virtual machine was stored. If we look at the virtual machine here, here's all the different virtual machine files. What if I just went in here and I accidentally deleted from disk the VMX file? Uh-oh, we've got a problem. That virtual machine configuration file is gone. That's a very important file, right? The VMX file. That's the configuration for the entire virtual machine. So how do we get it back? Well, let's go over to the Veeam Backup Console. And let's go into our backup list. And instead of using the Restore Wizard up here, which we can use to specify virtual machine files only, let's say Cancel, and we can just right-click on the virtual machine, and we'll select here Restore Virtual Machine Files. We'll use the latest backup. And now it asks where we want the files to be restored. Well, we could put them on our local computer, which in this case is the Veeam Backup Server, or we could put them back on the ESX server where they belong. So let's go ahead and browse. And I'm actually going to put this VMX file right back in the folder for that virtual machine. We'll go into the VMFS, we'll go into Volumes, we'll go into the iOmega SAN, and we'll go to that Windows 2008 R2 virtual machine, and we'll put it in that folder. I'll say OK there. And let's clear all here, and let's just select the VMX file. That's the only file I want to restore. I'll say next and I'll say finish. Let's give it just a second to restore this small file. And there we go, the restore is completed. It took 16 seconds to do that. Let's say close. And now let's go back to the vSphere client in the data store browser. Here we are, let's click refresh. And there we go, there's our VMX file that's been restored. Well, that was really easy. I didn't even have to pause the video recording to allow that to complete. It just took a few seconds. So that's the second type of restore I wanted to show you. Now let's move on to the third type of restore, and that is to restore individual files from a guest operating system using Veeam Backup. All right, back here in the Veeam Backup client, let's say that we want to restore individual files. We can use the Restore Wizard up here and we can specify individual guest files. So this would be a file level restore. But I should point out that this is different than using the Veeam file level restore wizard. That's a whole different application that you go down to start down here and you run from inside the Veeam folder. This is the file level restore wizard which can restore a greater number of file types specifically to Linux virtual machines. And to use that you need to install VMware Player. I've got a whole separate video on using that file level restore client. What we're going to do is to use the individual guest file restore inside the Veeam Backup console. Which still works great and it's very functional for standard Windows files. So I'll say next here and we'll restore files from the backup job number one specifically to this Windows 2008 server. I'll say next. We'll choose the latest backup. I'll say next. And you say finish here and it takes just a second and this file level restore client pops up. Here we go. This is called the backup browser and it's part of Veeam Backup and what you can do here is you can expand these file trees 
and you can go down and you can look through the files that were backed up at the file level using Veeam Backup. So let's say I expand users here and let's look in the desktop of one of these users and like here's a Veeam monitor link that's a shortcut on the desktop of the administrative account for the domain. So let's go over to that virtual machine and let's delete one of these files. And we'll open up the console for this virtual machine. And I'm logged in as the domain administrator. It's the same desktop folder that I showed you over in the Veeam Backup File Level Restore browser. So what I'm going to do is to go in here and let's delete this Veeam Monitor icon right here. If we right click on it, let's look at the properties for it. Let's see where it's located. It's located in C colon users, administrator, wirebrain coffee, desktop. And it is the Veeam monitor for VMware shortcut link .lnk file. And that's the same file I showed you over in the backup browser. So I'm going to select it and then hold down shift and hit delete. So it doesn't even go to the recycle bin. We'll say yes and it's gone. Now let's go over to that backup browser and let's restore that individual file and get that link back on our desktop. Alright here we are in the vMonitor backup client in the backup browser and here's the same link that I just deleted. I can right click on this link and I can say that I want to copy it to and what I can do is I can select the folder where I want this link to go. So let's put it out on the storage area network in the Y drive I'll say yes there. We'll say OK. It flashed by real quick. It restored that file for us. We can close this out. And now let's go to that Windows 2008 virtual machine where we deleted the file. All right, here we are. What I'm going to do is to open up Windows Explorer. Let's go to my computer. Let's go to the Y drive. Here's that vMonitor shortcut that we deleted. All I have to do is drag it over, drop it on my desktop, put it back in its rightful place and there we go we just restored the vMonitor link and that's just an example of restoring an individual users important files that might have got deleted off of their desktop so with that let's go back to our slides alright so what did we learn in this video well first off I showed you how we restored an entire virtual machine using Veeam backup first we deleted the virtual machine to prove that it was really going to work and then we restored it using the Veeam Backup Restore Wizard. It took about 20 minutes on my relatively slow lab network to restore that Windows 2008 R2 server. Next up I deleted the VMX file for that same Windows 2008 virtual machine and then we went in and we restored that individual VMX file and that only took us six seconds to actually perform the restore. And then finally I showed you how to restore individual virtual machine files. We went into that same virtual machine, we brought out the backup browser from the latest backup and we were able to browse the file structure. From there I could select individual files or folders and restore them either to the local Veeam backup appliance or to a network share. To show you how it could work I deleted a shortcut off the desktop and then restored that shortcut back to the desktop using the file level restore inside Veeam backup. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video covering restoring virtual machines with Veeam Backup. Thanks for watching.